Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of the F5 Weekend Refresh. We've got some really interesting stories today and some cool updates to talk about. Please make sure to hit the like button if you're enjoying the video and subscribe to us for more weekly gaming videos. With all that being said, let's dive right in here. Starting things up today, we're going to talk a little bit about something that was brought up last week. The SAG after voice actor strike is still in full swing and now we have some more details. Last week I just talked about how the strike came up and the reasoning behind the strike going into full effect. Now, things continue to heat up for the angry voice actors. A last attempt to reach an agreement with video game employers this week was not successful. Management remains unwilling to agree to fair terms that would bring the interactive contract into the 21st century. Therefore, as of 12.01 AM Pacific Time today, SAG After is on strike against the following video game employers with regards to all games that went into production after February 17th, 2015. Now I talked about that list a little bit last week, it includes Disney and EA, everything like that, so if you want to see the full list, feel free to check out the article that we published on the website. Now sag after only represents 25% of the voice acting population, but they're trying to make big waves for everybody. They've been urging people to join a picket line in front of EA's headquarters, and I'm really hoping these hardworking men and women can get what they're after here. Recently Bethesda has been doing a lot of work with their console mod deals for Fallout 4. On Xbox One you can basically upload any mod you want for Fallout 4 as long as it's under 2 gigabytes. Sony however is forcing the file size to be 900 megabyte maximum and it can only contain assets included within the base game. Now that Skyrim Special Edition is coming out, Sony is continuing to be stubborn. For Skyrim Special Edition, mods will reserve 5GB and 1GB of space on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 respectively. That's not a lot of data for Sony, but there's a small silver lining to this dark cloud. For most mods, the external elements, or the stuff that Sony has expressly forbidden, are what takes up the most memory. So having less memory won't mean the mods will be worse quality, but they will be worse quality just because there won't be any external assets involved. There's been a lot of talk around Blizzard regarding the return of legacy servers for their popular MMORPG World of Warcraft. While Blizzard has been very transparent about the challenges and possibilities of getting a dedicated server for vanilla World of Warcraft content to the public, that doesn't mean we're completely in the know, and unfortunately for the fans, Blizzard recently made it abundantly clear that this year's BlizzCon will not provide an opportunity for anybody to learn anything new about their tentative plans. Hey everyone, we've seen some talk among the community that you might be expecting to hear some news on legacy servers at BlizzCon, and we just wanted to take a moment to let you know that while we're still discussing the possibility, we won't have any updates to share on that until after the show. He continued to say how a major focus of the World of Warcraft section of the con would be largely devoted to showing off new content rather than mulling in the past. Admirable, I suppose, but I think more people are excited at the idea that Blizzard is at least considering the possibility of a vanilla server. Team Ninja, which has once been known for its astounding difficulty, which was plainly laid out in several of the Ninja Gaiden entries, is struggling to rise back onto the pedestal it once stood proudly upon. However, it just might with Neo, the upcoming action title that takes a page from Dark Souls while keeping an eastern mythological flair. Recently fans learned a bit more about Neo, which shines a spotlight on a western samurai named William Adams. Thanks to a recent interview with the game's developer, Fumihiko Yasuda, we now have some pretty shocking new information. When asked about game length, Yasuda said that it would take about 70 hours to complete the full game. He also stated that despite the petition to get the game on PC, they have absolutely no plans to release Neo for PC gamers. It's hardly news that some companies are more forgiving than others when it comes to hacking, cheating, or using bots. League of Legends developer Riot Games is fairly forgiving and tends to avoid handing out permanent bans. On the other side, Blizzard has a zero tolerance policy, and the moment you decide to use a hack or attempt to cheat, Blizzard will not only ban you from the game you're playing, they very well might stop you from playing any of their games with little hope of ever returning. You can argue the merits of which system works best, but for Rockstar and Grand Theft Auto Online, the answer is very clear. Things are fairly loose with players able to cheat, mod, and exploit without much concern. In an attempt to reduce the amount of cheaters and hackers, Rockstar has recently tightened its rules and cracked down a little bit on the community. They've removed trillions of in-game currency that was earned illegitimately from the bank accounts of players. On top of this, they're taking their three-strike policy and turning it into a two-strike one, where your first offense will prompt a suspension, while the second will get you a ban. 
GTA players love cheating, and it's been a huge part of the game since it first came out. I don't expect this crackdown by Rockstar to have a huge influence on the hackers, but for now, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Turtle Rock recently made headlines when they announced they were taking their asymmetric multiplayer experience, Evolve, and bringing some major changes to it, updating the gameplay, the game modes, and perhaps more importantly, turning it into a free-to-play experience on PCs. By all accounts, the move was a massive success with millions of players returning to the once abandoned servers and breathing life into a nearly dead game. But things have taken quite a turn. In a forum post, Total Rock has told the players exactly what's happening. Seems like the greater things you aspire to, the more time it takes. We had huge aspirations for Evolve, and while we got to spend five and a half awesome years on Planet Sheer with a ragtag group of planet tamers and fearsome monsters, it still doesn't feel like enough. We were hungry for more, but unfortunately, today is the last day that Turtle Rock Studios can work on Evolve. We have no idea what's going to happen with the game at this point. It might crash and die, somebody else might take over, the servers might be shut down, I have no clue. All I know for sure is that this is leaving fans with a ton of unanswered questions. New VR headsets will be coming to the market very shortly, and they may be a bit more affordable. At Microsoft's Windows 10 event that was held in New York on Wednesday, they emphasized a large focus on virtual reality in an upcoming Windows 10 Creators update. The update will be coming out in the early months of 2017, but it should allow for more affordable and even more advanced VR headsets coming to the market. At the event, they teased several new VR headsets that will be available on the market soon. These headsets were created by Acer, Dell, HP, Lenovo, etc. Microsoft came out and stated that these headsets will feature inside-out tracking, which is the ability to track movement in space without mounted sensors all around you. Once you put on the headset, it will be ready to go without having to add any outside sources. It sounds like these new VR lenses will be great for casual gamers. Not a ton of setup will be required, and it can be used very casually wherever you happen to be. They're looking to be priced around $299, which isn't too bad when you look at the prices of other headsets on the market right now. With the launch of Titanfall 2 a few days ago, I wanted to give a little information regarding the single player. While Titanfall 1 had no single player campaign whatsoever, the new title has promised a true campaign and will deliver one to players this time around. The campaign puts the player in control of Jack Cooper, a soldier who has always wanted to get the chance to be a pilot. Well, it just so happens that the pilot of Titan BT-7274 was killed, and Jack will finally get his opportunity to use his own Titan. The IMC, a group who wishes to overtake all of your friendly colonies and resources, will be your main target in the game. The campaign in its entirety will take less than 5 hours for experienced, speedy players, and around 7 or more for the casual gamers out there. Each level will also have collectibles, so achievement hunters rejoice and sing as you'll get your chance to earn some big bucks here. While the game is a shooter, the campaign of Titanfall 2 isn't all about blasting down your dirty enemies. You'll have to use the full potential of your Titan and pilot abilities to overcome obstacles, which may also create some slow and tedious gameplay for the players that are less familiar to the game. I've heard pretty great things about the game so far, and I hope it's everything that fans were expecting from it. Continuing on with the Titanfall 2 news, Respawn Entertainment has proven time and time again that they are willing to listen to their fans and give them what they want, which led to the addition of the single player mode I was just talking about. But Respawn Entertainment is not done yet, as they've taken to Twitter to try to raise hype to all new levels. They're advertising the fact that their game will not have a feature that most games have these days, a season pass. No season pass required, all maps and modes will be free in Titanfall 2 multiplayer. This means no splitting up the community, and it all starts with the legendary Angel City map, remastered from the original Titanfall. This means once you've purchased Titanfall 2, your investment includes a full single player campaign, the full multiplayer maps and modes, and long term support with no hidden costs. You can pre order the game to play three days early, but it will never cost you extra. Now, don't go thinking that there won't be any microtransactions. Respawn Entertainment has already admitted that they will be in the game, however, they will be cosmetic purchases only. As they made clear in the quote I just read, anything that affects gameplay will be free for everybody. Next we have something really strange, but I guess that's the point of the game. The RPG Undertale came out a little over a year ago, and it's been pretty successful in that time. The game itself is really weird, and the storyline is based around a human who falls underground into a world of monsters. You don't have to kill anybody throughout the entire game, but you can if you wanna. Anyway, figures for the game have been announced, and the trailer is extremely weird. I was laughing quite a bit the first time I saw it, mainly because I had absolutely no idea what was happening. It definitely got me interested in the game a bit, as it was a title I had never really looked into, but
But yeah, this is the trailer for the figurines, so if you want one, you can go pick one up. If you aren't interested at all, let's wrap the video up right now with some information about Bethesda. Now we know that Bethesda is very proud of their newest title, Dishonored 2. We've seen a ton of trailers for the game, there have been a lot of interviews, and people are pretty pumped for it to come out in a few weeks. Well, Bethesda wanted to change things up with their new Take Back What's Yours trailer. This one shows absolutely no gameplay whatsoever, but is instead all live action. While this is playing in the background, I have some more information on the game's release and what fans should consider doing. Bethesda is very set in stone about releasing their games to reviewers and websites only one day before the official release of said game. The same thing will apply with Dishonored 2. Normally a company would say to keep your pre-order on because if you're interested in what we're showing you, you'll totally love the game. Well, Bethesda said, we also understand that some of you want to read reviews before you make your decision, and if that's the case, we encourage you to wait for your favorite reviewers to share their thoughts. Bethesda is so confident in their titles that they're basically saying, yeah, just wait if you want to, you're going to end up buying it, I'm sure, the reviews will be solid. Good for Bethesda for not putting any pressure on the community, and I'm sure they're going to deliver a great product. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more of these, maybe even leave a comment down below if you want to share some of your own opinions on these stories. Until next time, this is AS Unreal, and we hope to see you soon.